So let's put this uh, let's put this into practice. Let's set up a little problem here. Oops, that's not what I want to do right now. Beat myself to the punch. Okay. This is the problem that you see in the book or in the test. 20 feet, I like round numbers. Eight feet and 12 feet. 1,000 pounds makes it easy. Okay, so I have my load. I have 1,000 pounds of load. Got my geometry. I know it's a beam. I know it's got these supports. I know where the load is. I know how long the load, how long the beam is. What's the first thing we want to do? Always free the body, free it. Get these little supports out of here. I know that's a hinge, so I'm going to replace it with that load and this load. And I know this is a roller, so I'm going to replace it with just one. Okay. So now I freed my body, and I want to know, well, what's the uh, what's the reaction over here? What am I going to get over here? I start looking at my three rolls that we just set up, wherever those went. Okay, up is down, left, right. Clockwise, counterclockwise. So I can immediately rule one of them out. Because I've only got one little horizontal over here. And I don't have any horizontal applied loads. I don't have anything going on over here. So if I don't have anything pushing left, this must not be doing anything to the right. So that automatically equals zero. So now all I've got is vertical vertical loads, some coming down, some coming up. So I know that what? That plus that has got equal to what? 1,000. So we're going to just call this A and B for argument's sake. What else do I know? I know that everything going clockwise, they got equal to what's going counterclockwise. So if we're looking for B, let's put a pin right here on A. We're going to say, okay, what makes that beam want to go clockwise? What do you guys think? I've got this beam here. What makes it want to rotate clockwise? Got it? The thousand pounds? Yeah, this thing wants to push that beam down and makes wants to make it go like that. Let's go clockwise. So I've got a thousand pounds. And that's how far from that pin? Eight feet? No biggie. Thousand pounds times eight feet. Alright, anything else want to make go clockwise? I don't think so, so let's look at counterclockwise. What makes this beam want to spin that way? Well, that's this reaction that we're looking for. So it's, let's just call it B. We can call it R sub B if you want. Reaction at B times what distance? 20 feet? So we've got clockwise, counterclockwise. We know these have to equal to each other. So we can come back down here and say 1,000 pounds times 8 feet. It's got to be equal to that reaction at B times 20 feet. Algebra tells me I put this 20 foot over here. So what's RB equal to? Calculators. <laughs> What's that? 400. 400 pounds. 
Good, we got this. 400 pounds. Now it gets easy. Got 1,000 pounds going down. 400 coming up. What's this got to be? 600. Now is everything satisfied? Well, nothing's rotating around. Whatever point you pick, if you want to pick this point, you can say 600 times 8 is equal to 400 times 12. You pick this point, the same thing we did before. 1,000 times 12 is equal to 600 times 20. Uh, there's no horizontal load in this thing. I've got 1,000 pounds going down, 1,000 pounds coming up. Everything balances out. That's exactly what we want to do. So what if we modify this thing a little bit and call it a cantilever? Yikes. Does it get harder or easier or stay about the same? Okay, first thing, what is the first thing we do? Number one. Place these with arrows, right? Do I need a horizontal arrow here at this pin? It should have one, but I don't have any other horizontal loads in this whole thing, so we're not going to worry about it. Now we go through the same process. We know that these two equal a thousand pounds, but we're not sure how much goes into one and how much goes into the other. So we're going to pick a point. What point do we want to pick? We could pick this point, or we could pick this point. Um, I'd say this point is probably going to be easier to look at. So we're going to find this one first. This will be A. This will be B over here. So, same thing, clockwise. It's equal to what? What makes this thing want to rotate about that point clockwise? <coughs> It would be that reaction at A times that 16 feet. What makes it want to go counterclockwise? Well, it's that 1,000 pounds times how far? Just spit it out, 20 feet. We know those are equal. So my reaction at A times 16 feet is equal to 1,000 pounds times 20 feet. Algebra tells me I put this down here. 16 foot, whoops, 16 foot. What's reaction at A? Calculators. Calculators. 1250. Sounds about right. 1250 pounds. Yeah, yeah. So we know this is, so we know that's 1250 pounds, right? Now we got a little bit of a problem. We look at our diagram here and we say, well, I got 1,000 pounds coming down. I got 1,250 pounds coming up. Well, that can't be right. I can't have 1,250 plus something equal to 1,000. No big deal. My assumption on this arrow is wrong. This arrow should have been like that. No biggie. You have to, um, when you're setting these problems up, you got to make an assumption. You got to say, I think it's going to go this way. You work out the problem. If it turns out to be wrong, then you just have to uh, change the direction of that arrow. So now, what does it make sense? I got 1250 coming up. Coming down, I got 1000 plus what? 250. That kind of makes sense. If you've got a board sticking out here on two supports and you stand here, you're going to need to hold this end of it down or else it's going to flip up in the air. 
So that makes sense. Everything balances out. You take any point along here. 1,000 times 4 is going to equal to 250 times 16. Uh, all my downs equal all my ups. I think we got it. The last little simple beam example we're going to do is a cantilever. So we've got our 1,000 pounds coming down here. And this is a fixed connection. This is fixed right into the wall. And let's call this I don't know, 16 feet. So what's the first thing that we're going to do? Get rid of that. Get rid of that nasty thing. It's going to be a vertical load. It's going to be a horizontal load. It's going to be some kind of this. We're going to guess it's that. We don't have any other horizontal loads in this whole thing. So we can get rid of our horizontal. We've only got one vertical and one vertical. So that's easy. I got a thousand going down. I got to have a thousand coming up. Now, what's this moment equal to? Yeah, we just sum it about that point clockwise is equal to what? A thousand <laughs> times that 16 feet. Counterclockwise, there's only one thing it's this little M arrow that we grew that we drew is our moment. Put them together. Equal to 16,000. What's the unit on this? What's the unit? Pound, not per foot, pound foot. Because we multiplied pounds times feet. 1,600 pound feet. We'll talk a little bit more about units later.